Spooky fans. Michael here. So I just had some sushi and fried cheesecake for dinner. And I'm, uh, <laughs> the food coma's hitting me pretty. Today I'm back to answer another Pokemon question. Chances are if you've played any Pokemon game, you're familiar with the in-game currency, the Pokemon Dollar. Or as a lot of people call it, the Poke Dollar. You obtain Poke Dollars by beating other trainers in battle or selling items, and you use Poke Dollars to buy a variety of items, mainly Pokeballs and medicine, but also vitamins or special stones or dolls. Hey, hey, hey. Action figures. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that items in the game seem to cost a lot. A Pokeball is 200 Poke Dollars, a Hyper Potion is 1200, vitamins like calcium are 9800, and of course the bike is infamously 1 million Poke Dollars. These prices seem completely absurd. So could there ever actually be a way that Pokemon Dollars would make logical sense? Well, actually, yeah. Pokemon is a game originally made in Japan, so it turns out that the Poke Dollar is actually based directly off of the Japanese currency, the Yen. Their symbols are very similar, with the Y and the Yen symbol simply changing to a P for Pokemon. Also in the original Japanese versions of the games, they use this symbol for the currency, which is actually the Japanese kanji for Yen. So it's essentially confirmed that Poke Dollars are Yen. So because of this, prices in the games actually make a fair amount of sense. The exchange rate for US dollars to yen, at the time of me writing the script of this video because economics fluctuate and stuff, is 1 US dollar to 119.34 yen. Also, I am going to talk in terms of the US dollar for the remainder of this video since that is the currency that I'm the most familiar with, so if you're not from somewhere that uses a currency that's closely equated to the US dollar, I do apologize in advance. So how much do some of the common Pokemon items cost in US dollars? Well, with some very easy math, we can find out. A Pokeball at 200 Poke Dollars would cost around $1.68. A Hyper Potion at 1200 Poke Dollars costs around 10 bucks. Vitamins at 9800 would cost around 82 US dollars. The most money a player can carry in the later games, 9,999,999 Poke Dollars, is around 84,000 US dollars. And that $1 million bike? would cost around 8,379 bucks. So of these four items, a Pokeball being less than two bucks and a Hyper Potion being around 10 bucks makes a fair amount of sense. The bike being $8,400 actually also makes sense too, since a lot of high-end road bikes can get that expensive or even more. However, the vitamins being $80 seems pretty steep. There are some dietary supplements that can get that expensive, but that's mainly just nutrition stores overcharging like crazy. But since these vitamins make your Pokemon gain 10 EV points instantly, they do seem to be a pretty good fit to the description of the Miracle Pill. At least, better than anything that GNC sells. So for the most part, a lot of the prices in stores make sense. But the payouts for battles? Not so much. A lot of youngsters early in the games give you just a few US dollars, which makes sense since they're just little kids. But get this. After defeating Steven for the first time in Oris, becoming the Pokemon League champion, your monetary reward is 11,800 Poke Dollars, which equates to $98.88. I defeat the strongest trainer in Hoenn and I can't even buy a f***ing 3DS. So in the end, Pokemon training doesn't appear to be the most economical profession. But considering the fact that you don't have to pay for food, lodging, healthcare, or taxes, it appears to work out. So in the end, does the Pokemon dollar make sense? In regards to buying things, I think so. In regards to payout after a battle, in the Pokemon world, it works. In ours, Pokemon trainers would be very poor people. What did you think of this video? Do you think the Pokemon dollar makes sense? What are some other Pokemon questions you want me to answer? Let me know in the comments below! And if you like this video, be sure to hit like, follow me on Twitter and Facebook, and subscribe if you haven't. All right, that's all I have for now. So until next time, Pokefans. Gotta catch them all!